Hey everyone! Today's video is going to be another tutorial on the ZWO ASI Air. The topic of today's tutorial is going to be how to auto guide and how to dither using the ASI Air. Now not only is this super easy to do, it's also extremely effective. If you want the most crisp, sharp, long exposure astro photographs, you definitely need to auto guide and dithering is also a major plus and they're both very easy to do with the ASI Air. So hopefully by the end of this video, you're seeing great results auto-guiding and dithering using the ASI Air and producing some awesome images of your own. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now before you start auto-guiding, you need to determine how you're going to connect your guider to your mount. Now there's two main ways to do this. There's an old school way, which is the way I use, using the ST4 cable, or there's a modern way, and that's using the USB cable and they both have their advantages and disadvantages. The ST4 cable, the big advantage is it's extremely simple, it's time proven, uh, can't really get it wrong. Uh, it plugs into the guide camera and then typically goes into the auto guide port on the mount. And that's pretty much it. It's very, very simple, but it does not give you much advanced control over the mount like the USB cable does. So this one's a little bit more complex, but it does give you more control over the mount. So this one typically plugs in to a hand controller, which goes directly into the ASI Air. And this is going to give you control over more advanced features. Now, a lot of astrophotographers nowadays will also say this is a more effective and efficient way to auto guide with better results. I don't really see the difference a whole lot. I've used both and I just stick with this way because it's really, really simple and I don't really use the advanced commands on my mount very often. So either way, it's a personal choice. Use whichever you want, uh, but either way should work out no problem. Uh, make sure you have a good polar alignment before you start auto guiding. The better your polar alignment, the better your guiding is going to be. And that's especially true for long focal length telescopes. In fact, it's essential. You need a good polar alignment. Uh, lower focal length telescopes are a little bit more forgiving, but in general, the better your polar alignment, the better your guiding results. You'll also want to make sure your mount is well balanced so that when your auto guider is sending commands to the mount, it's not getting bogged down and it can catch up and everything runs smoothly. So balance is key and polar alignment is key. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and balance my telescope. I'm gonna polar align it and I'm gonna get it on my imaging target. And then I'm gonna start the auto guiding and dithering sequence in the ASI Air app. And just one final tip for you, if you're using a guide scope, don't forget to take off the dust cap. I've done this so many times and I get so frustrated with myself. I'm like, hey, I can't see anything. What is going on? 20 minutes later, oh, the dust cap is still on. Oh, it's such a frustrating thing, but it's so easy to do. So if you're using guide scope, just make sure this is off. All right, so I just finished polar lining on Deshuba, which is above Antares in the constellation Scorpius. And uh, the polar alignment is right on the money. So auto guiding should be pretty easy from here. Okay, so with that great polar alignment, I am now ready to begin auto guiding. Uh, the first thing I did was take a test exposure of my target just to make sure I'm focused and everything is looking good. Uh, so this is the Pelican Nebula, it's IC5070. And if I tap on my main camera tab here, you can just see what I'm using. This is the ASI 294 MC Pro. The telescope is the Celestron 8 inch Rasa, so that has a 400 millimeter focal length. I'm using 120 gain, and the CMOS is being cooled to negative 10 degrees Celsius. So, that being said, the image looks pretty good so far, the polar alignment looks good, so I'm ready to begin guiding. So I'm just going to direct your attention over to the left, you'll see the guide button here. Now you're not going to use this right now, but it will be important later, so that's why I'm showing it to you. Uh, you can see that dithering is turned off for now. Uh, so I'm just going to tap that and get rid of it. And now you'll see the guide settings button at the top and that you're going to tap on. And this is actually going to give you all the settings that you need to guide. So the guide camera, I'm going to pick the ZWO ASI 178mm. Now obviously the 294MC Pro is grayed out because it's already in use as the main imaging camera. So I'm going to tap on that. And then don't forget to turn it on over on the right. So tap on that. Okay, great. The guide scope focal length is 210 millimeters because I'm using the Stellar View 50 millimeter guide scope. You want to make sure that that value is accurate. Uh, gain settings for guiding. Well, some people say you know you should go 80 to 90 percent of your guide camera's gain, or 10 to 20 percent. I found that kind of right in the middle or just below the middle is fine. So I'm using 200 gain. 
the calibration step is 2,000 milliseconds, the max deck duration is 2,000 milliseconds, and the max RA duration is 2,000 milliseconds. Now I'm going to pause the video real quick and interject a few of my thoughts. In the time that I've recorded this video, I realized there's some mistakes in here, and the first being the calibration step at 2,000 milliseconds. That's probably too long for most users. Uh, that's what the default setting is when you get the ASIR. So I would recommend switching that down to about 400 or 500 milliseconds. If you feel like you need to increase it, you definitely can, maybe 600 or 700 milliseconds, but 2,000 milliseconds is probably just a bit too long. And the same goes for the max deck duration and the max RA duration. Those should not be 2,000 milliseconds. Uh, 300 to 400 milliseconds is... Uh, probably a much better setting for most guiding setups. So when I made those changes to 300 milliseconds on, on my max deck and max RA durations, my guiding results were significantly improved. Uh, both axes before at 2000 milliseconds were roughly 1.5 arc seconds. After I made those adjustments, uh, they're now about 0 0.5 arc seconds in both axes. So much, much better. It's important to remember that, you know, the PhD in the ASI Air is a light version. So you don't have access to all the settings, but you do have access to the main settings. It's also important to remember that each night is going to be different. So you may have to adjust your settings depending on where you're imaging. You know, if you're more towards the zenith or more towards the horizon, you're going to have to change up your settings. So luckily the ASI Air makes it really easy to do that. So yeah, that is just a brief interjection and we'll uh, continue with the video now. An auto restore calibration, I think it's fairly obvious what that does. And then dither settings is what I'm going to tap on next. So what is dithering exactly? Well, dithering is a really easy way to remove noise from your images using your auto guider. I have my auto guider set up to move my field of view three pixels in a random distance and direction every image. And what that will do is characterize the noise. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you tell your auto guider to move the image by three pixels, you would expect all the pixels to move by three, right? Well, some don't. And those pixels that don't move are noise, so-called dead pixels or hot pixels. And because you characterize that noise by dithering the image, it can later be removed by your stacking software. So basically, dithering works hand in hand with dark frames to remove noise and make your images even more crisp. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on over on the right. Don't want to forget to do that. I have it set to uh, move my images three pixels, like I said. Some people that do ultra wide field imaging do 10, uh, but for this wide field setup, three should be just fine. Uh, stability is in arc seconds, and that's basically how close do you need to get back to your guide star before guiding resumes. So I've set it to two arc seconds. Three arc seconds honestly wouldn't be a bad choice for this setup either. Uh, the settle time is five seconds. That's what I have set, and that basically is how long the uh, guiding needs to be stable after dithering for you to start your imaging again. And then interval is how many images do you want to dither basically. So if you set it to one, you're gonna dither every image and that's what I do. It takes a little bit longer, but I found it's worth it. You know, if you only want to dither every five images, put five right there. And then RA only obviously means to guide in right ascension only. So I'm just going to tap back now. Okay, so now the guide settings button at the top is highlighted, as you can see, since we turned on auto guiding. And now if you tap on the guide button at the left, you'll see that dithering is also turned on. So go ahead and tap on the graph now, and this is going to pull up the guide menu. Now make sure the dust cap is off of your guide scope, otherwise you're not going to see anything. And then go ahead and tap the looping button. Now notice the ASI Air picks the best guide star automatically. Now you're going to want to make sure you don't pick a star that is too dim. If you pick a star that's too dim, you're going to lose it and find it and lose it and find it and your auto guiding performance is going to be pretty poor throughout the night. Likewise, you don't want to guide on a star that is too bright. Remember, the whole point of auto guiding is to measure the brightness of a star and move the mount accordingly. If you can't measure how much that star is moving, then auto guiding isn't going to work so well. So this star in the middle here looks pretty good. So I'm just actually going to keep that. I don't see a reason to, to move that. And then you'll notice if I tap on the start guiding button, I'm going to get an error. So I'm going to tap on that now. 
And notice it says all equipment must be connected first, no matter how many times I tap on that. So you may be confused thinking, you know, I do have all my equipment connected. Why isn't this working? Well, if you look at the top, there's a telescope and mount icon that is not highlighted. That also needs to be turned on. So I'm going to tap on that now and that's going to bring open the telescope settings. Now I'm using the ST4 cable tonight as I mentioned. Uh, if you're not and you want to use more advanced controls just find your mount and connect that way but for simplicity's sake for this video I'm using the ST4. I'm going to now turn that on. There we go. And now when I come back I can go ahead and tap the guide button and it will start calibrating. And just like that, guiding was quickly established. You can see my numbers are looking pretty good so far. Uh, they usually fluctuate quite a bit within the first minute uh, and then start to, to level out a little bit, but I've decided to go with two second exposures tonight. In general, the consensus is anywhere from two to five seconds is pretty appropriate for auto guiding. As you do get closer to the zenith, you may want to reduce your exposure time a little bit, uh, but for this case, two seconds is, is what I'm going with. Uh, what's also nice too is you can increase or decrease the aggressiveness in both axes if you need to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and interrupt myself again. Uh, but when it comes to declination aggressiveness and right ascension aggressiveness, uh, you really need to look at the graph and the numbers. If your graph and numbers are really jumpy, you're probably overcorrecting or overguiding and you'll want to decrease the aggressiveness in whatever axis you notice the problem in. And the same goes for undercorrecting or not enough guiding. If you don't see very many changes and your your numbers are aren't that great and you need to increase the aggressiveness, you certainly can do that. So it's kind of a game that you just have to play. You just have to adjust things until you you get it right. And you know, theoretically, you shouldn't even need to auto guide in declination. You should only need to auto guide in RA. But this is not a perfect world, so we do auto guide in deck. But really you should work on refining your right ascension as much as possible and getting it uh, as good as you can. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get back to the video. And really, you're getting most of the functionality of the computer-based version of PHD in the ASI Air. It's just super, super simple. So uh, we are guiding now. I'm gonna go ahead and tap back. You can see now the guiding uh, button is overlaid on the main screen and you get all your numbers here and your graph. So now I'm ready to image. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on the preview tab and switch this over to auto run. Then I'm going to tap the 0 out of 30 here. So it's IC5070, 120 second lights. I'm going to take uh, 150 of these what's 150 120 that's 300 minutes okay so five hours so yep i'm going to take five hours group by slot yes meridian flip so this feature is super super cool um, when performing a meridian flip it will stop guiding it will flip and then it will start guiding again on the same star for you now i will say this if you're using an st4 cable this feature probably will not work. You're going to need to use the advanced commands on the mount that other uh, connections are going to give you. So if you're using ST4, don't expect the Meridian flip, flip feature to work. Um, and then shut down ASI Air. I'm going to tap that so when you're done with the imaging session, the ASI Air will automatically, will automatically turn itself off. So now I'm going to hit back guiding is looking decent uh, you know not amazing but totally sufficient for two minute exposures even five minute exposures i think this would be just fine so i'm going to go ahead and start my imaging run i'm going to get a message that asi air will power off after finishing because that's what i selected so yes that's fine confirm and i'm going to let it start going here and uh, we'll check and see how it did Okay, so 15 seconds away from the first exposure being completed here. Uh, the guiding is still looking pretty decent. Not the best in the world, but good. Now notice, right as the exposure finishes here, the bottom left of that graph, it says guiding. It's going to switch to dithering. Dithering now. Settling. It's 5.7 arc seconds. It needs to be within 2, remember, to, to start the settle. So it's doing that now. 
Okay. And it's waited for five seconds. Awesome, it's done and taking the next exposure. So basically what that was doing is it was settling out for five seconds within that two arc second specified range before it started again. And uh, you can see that on the graph, the dither right there. And things are coming back down. So yeah, this looks really, really good. The image updated, everything is looking nice. If I zoom in here, look at the stars. They look nice and round. So yeah, these look these look really, really good. So I am going to let this go ahead and run for five hours, auto guide for five hours and dither obviously after each image and then uh, go ahead and, and see the results. I'm expecting to get a pretty decent image. All right, let's check out these stars and see how round they are after two minute exposures. So I think the stars look pretty good. If I zoom in here and check them out, they're all looking pretty round to me. You can see that the auto guiding was really effective. Even for two minute exposures, it's pretty necessary to auto guide to get those round sharp stars and it becomes even more necessary the longer your image duration goes. If you want to expose for five minutes, auto guiding is basically a necessity at that point. Auto guiding is also very beneficial for long focal length telescopes where guiding errors quickly become apparent. So overall, the stars look good. Exposure after exposure, the stars are round. So I think the ASI Air shows that it is more than capable of guiding your mount and allowing you to do quality astrophotography. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the ZWO ASI Air on auto guiding and dithering. You can see it's a pretty simple process and is capable of producing some pretty amazing images. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and clear skies.